Hello, and welcome to the Magical World G. Michael Vesey podcast. This is G. Michael Vesey speaking. Hello, and welcome. For this shorter edition, I'm going to be talking a little bit about one of my books, which is called The New You, How to Create Your Own Reality. I put the book out several years ago and updated it for a second edition in 2018, but I think it's actually more relevant now than it ever was. Increasingly, we seem to live in an era where there is a narrative, and if you don't subscribe to that narrative, then things can happen to you. You can be deplatformed, you can be silenced, you can lose your job, you can lose your friends. And I'm really very concerned about this trend that we're seeing increasingly as we get into 2021. And I want to spend this podcast edition taking some excerpts from my book that I feel are relevant. So let's get started. I think one of the first things we need to talk about is the nature of reality. And so I'm going to read from the introduction. As you read these words, your eyes are taking in light emitted from the computer screen or that are reflected back from the page. This light enters your eye and is converted into electrical signals which are sent to a part of the brain that processes them back into a picture. The picture's upside down, by the way, but your brain then presents the page's picture to your consciousness the right way up. The image that you see is created inside your brain. It is more or less the same process as at work that gives you the feeling being transmitted from the nerves in your bum that it is rather numb from sitting on that seat. It is just a set of electrical signals sent to the brain where they are presented to your consciousness. Think about this a bit more and at the same time realize that you're just a cloud of atoms within a larger cloud of atoms. Even your brain is simply just a cloud of atoms. So what is your reality? What is reality? Is your reality, the one created inside your brain, different to mine? When we both see the colour purple, are we even seeing the same hue or colour? We're trained to know that that particular set of vibrations is to be described as purple, right? Quantum physics, don't go away, I won't bore you with too much detail, has been trying to unravel reality for quite some time, and what physicists have discovered is simply mind-boggling. The brain is presented with much more information than you can actually use, so it dumbs it down for you. It actually chooses the information to present to your consciousness, and it does so just moments after what you are observing actually took place. Imagine that. You actually do. And think about this. What information is it choosing not to present to your consciousness? What is the filter that it uses to decide which information to present to you? In fact, everything is vibration, or put in a more scientific way, it is all waves of different wavelengths. Quantum physics shows that waves can be particles and particles can be waves. The decider of whether wave or particle is the observer, you. The act of observing by consciousness actually collapses the waveform into particles. What does this mean? It means that you continuously create your reality and that you interact with all other co-creators of reality as you do this amazing feat. Yes, it is all a sort of matrix, and that is a fact. How you feel, how you were raised, how you speak, what you say, what you think, what politician you follow, and a myriad of other inputs determine your filter, and therefore your reality from moment to moment. Imagine what you could do if you were truly a conscious being and not operating more or less on autopilot much of the time. Maybe you could make things change via the force of your will and imagination. It is all about your imagination, you know. Maybe it isn't so much faith that can move mountains as it is about imagination and having faith in that imagining. In esoteric circles, there is the concept that there is both a reality and an actuality. Reality is essentially what you can perceive of the actuality, and this actuality cannot be perceived directly. Reality is seen as as fundamentally a self-made and self-sustained illusion coloured by your filters and the strength of your imagination. We don't really know what actuality is. It's a cloud of atoms and particles, I suppose, and scientists tell us that it's mostly space. It is also energy. But why it is, and what it really is, we don't actually know. Perhaps it's the mind of God. Perhaps it's just a computer simulation that we all exist in, like The Sims. We do not know. We can only postulate, theorise, and dream. Reality, your reality, is created using your imagination and your belief system. Your culture, upbringing, 
beliefs and the rules by which you now live your life all go into filtering and creating that reality. The reality in which you live is something created inside your brain, inside your mind. Yes, you have six senses to interact with the outer world, but think about that. If I touch something, do I really feel it? No, I don't. I receive a bunch of signals and impulses in my brain, and this is processed to give me the idea that I somehow felt something. In actuality, a bunch of atoms move towards another bunch of atoms. That's all. In order to build up our picture of reality, we need to be able to visualize colors, objects, sounds, and so on. We need to build a database of these in our heads that we can compare things to and recognize what it is that we see. But all of this, every image, sound, and sensation takes place in only your mind. You were taught that this is wood, this is metal, that's a tree, this is a face, and so on. You were told what you should see and what you should not. You were conditioned by your parents, school, and life experience. Your culture told you what was acceptable and what was not. It helped you create the reality that you then spend the rest of your life trapped in. If you understand this, then just like Neo in The Matrix, you realize that we do have a choice. Do you want to wake up? Your reality is actually simply an illusion, a wakeful dream. It is not actuality. Each and every one of us falls into the trap of believing in our own reality, even though we are creating that reality moment to moment through our belief set and our imagination. As a result, the world looks exactly like you expect it to. Let's examine that statement philosophically for a moment. If you believe the world is a cruel place filled with hate, then that is what it is. Conversely, if you see a paradise filled with beautiful people, then that is what it is. The problem is, is that most of us simply stumble through our lives out of control in terms of our thought processes, thinking things more or less spontaneously. One minute the world is a cruel place full of hate, and the next it's a paradise filled with beautiful people. In other words, we're continually sending out mixed signals, or sending in mixed signals. As a result, the reality that we create, as we say in Yorkshire, is neither now nor summit. We fail to create our reality with any consistency. And at the moment, let's imagine that we are constantly bombarded with bad news and all kinds of supposed science and experts and politicians and media, and they're all pushing a narrative. But that narrative, which you are taking on board and giving your energy and attention to, that narrative is just one narrative. It doesn't have to be your narrative. And in fact, if you really woke up and thought about it critically, you'd understand most of that narrative is a downright lie. I got to that point because I made an effort to study magical and occult systems over the years. And in the process, I came to some startling conclusions. You see, the only difference between a magician and an ordinary person is that a magician makes conscious efforts to create a better reality moment by moment whereas a non-magician simply goes with the flow, taking inputs without question and creating a reality that's based on non-conscious direction. They sleep through their lives in a cocoon of their own making, just like in The Matrix. But studying and practicing what I call magic anyway involves a great deal of self-examination and introspection, as well as a lot of practice of thought, discipline and control. It also aims to build and enhance your imaginative faculties. In essence, right there, you have several of the keys to creating your own reality. These are, in my opinion, we must be consistent and willful in setting up what it is that we want to create. We must remain disciplined and focused on that objective, unwavering in its pursuit. We must have the clarity of mind to stay focused and a powerful imagination to actually see and feel it around us. We must know ourselves truly and be in tune with our higher self in order to align what we think we want with what we actually need. If we can do all of this and do it willfully and purposefully, then I believe that we can and do create reality by magic. I'm pretty sure that one day science will come to the same conclusions. In fact, it already is. If you read various people, scientists like um, Bruce Lipton, for example, Anthony Peake, it's obvious that this is where science is really going. So before you discount me as a strange dreamer or a fool, I want you to think about a few things that tend to suggest that this is really how it works. One. Certain psychological techniques proven to have an imp impact and used by sports people and others uses the concept of strongly visualizing a result along with the bodily training to achieve that result. Athletes already use a form of this magic to achieve. 
They become so focused and so willful about their imagining and visualising performance goals that in some instances, they actually achieve their objectives. 2. Every book that I've ever read about positive thinking and creating success all teach aspects of the same approach that involves imagination, acting out, will, mindfulness, assuming that it will happen, being grateful and thankful for it when it does, and so on. They all use similar techniques. They use magic. Where they fall short, in my opinion, is that they forget to emphasize the knowing yourself part, and trust me, this is their weakness. 3. I happen to think that aspects of quantum physics seem to be pointing in a similar direction. We create our own reality, and if we just knew how to do it properly, and if we could do it without ego, out of love, that reality would be heaven on earth. It would be nirvana. But it would be our nirvana, as I also believe that each of us has the potential to create something slightly different, unique. It is this that divides and separates us, and yet it enriches us. It affords us an ability to co-create endless parallel worlds of nirvanas. There is an audio version of the first edition of the book read by Lorraine Ansel, very nicely, might I add. And so what I'd like to do is just um, have her read a little bit more of the book. Here she is. In meditation, I often see ripples in a pool. They start at a point and move outwards as small waves. If the small wave meets an object, an interference pattern occurs. Thoughts are like ripples. They start with a focus. Something triggers that focus, but then the thought expands like a ripple, moving ever outwards into the world, having who knows what impacts out there. Words. Words are sounds, and sounds are waves. So when we speak, ripples move out from ourselves, and those words can impact, not just those who hear them, but everything those sound ripples touch. Who knows what interference patterns result from our thoughts and words? Those waveforms or ripples that we all create oscillate all around. Perhaps the smallest thought of word starts ripple that becomes a tidal wave of change. Silence. We are often instructed to be silent. And if you think about it, with good reason... For if our thoughts and words create ripples through the substratum of reality, then when we think or speak in anger, what effect does this have? Speech is a gift that we so often misuse and abuse. God help us if we could hear thoughts. Think about it and contemplate what effect your ripples are having on reality. Once you start down a path of self-exploration, magical training and meditation, it becomes sort of obvious that reality is just a perception, a mirror, if you will. If you take an interest in the nature of reality, and that is the nature of magical study, then you understand that everything is internal of the mind. You understand that the mind works through filters or lenses built up by upbringing, what you've been taught, culture, nationality, gender, politics and religion, amongst a myriad of others. You quickly grasp that your reality is likely to be substantially different to anyone else's, yet the actuality, the underlying nature of a thing, is the same. We just see things differently as a result of all those lenses. As we work magically, we work to break down as many of those lenses as we can, uh, as we are aware of. We never manage to get to the point of actually seeing actuality, though, because we can't. We have to systemize, model, and simplify in order not to have our heads explode. Even our choice of words, by the way, is a clue as to who we truly are, how we are. However, we learn to understand how this all sort of works. We can talk of thought forms, egregores, tulpa, and other words that are attempts to describe a truism of magic and psyche. We engage in ritual methods to reinforce imagination, knowing that this is the engine wheel of creation and creativity, and more besides. And if we've learned this, and if we practice this, then surely we recognise media, celebrity, politics and the like for what they are. Magical systems targeting humanity and keeping them locked up in a constant energy and attention-giving game. The Matrix movie was a pretty good abstraction of this. Which pill will you take? Will you choose to play the game constantly giving your attention and energy to these things and ideas? Or will you take the other pill so that you wake up and realise what this is all about? A few signs of taking the other pill, in my opinion, are the ability to think critically about everything, even stuff you took for granted as fact. 
the acceptance of personal responsibility and the understanding that other humans need to accept that too or forever be dependent with a growing dependency at that. Once you understand what magic is, I cannot begin to understand how you can have any political affiliation at all because you are showing that you learned nothing and are still part of the system, giving your energy and attention to the monster. I cannot understand how knowing about the importance of free will and personal responsibility, anyone can subscribe to left-wing or right-wing mantras, particularly those of more and greater dependence on central government. It just does not compute. Instead, I think you should have learned that teaching self-reliance, liberty and self-responsibility through example and through action would be how a true magician would act. Thank you very much for listening to this edition of The Magical World of G. Michael Daisy. Please do like, subscribe, forward, share, etc., etc. I'm obviously always hoping to reach a broader audience. So once again, thank you. Goodbye.